this series of videos, I'd like to share my beliefs on metrics and leadership. And in this first video, I'll start with the idea of going to the Gamba. Now, Gamba um, is Japanese, which when loosely translated in the context of process means the place of the actual work where the activities are occurring. Now, what does going to the Gamba have to do with metrics or with leadership for that matter? As you may recall, this uh, inverted pyramid is, is symbolic of the idea of an empowered organization where the frontline staff here in rule number one and their um, first level managers, the frontline leaders here um, with number two, um, are empowered not only to execute the process, but to regularly conduct problem solving uh, on the process in order to improve it and to make changes within prescribed limits. So when we look at the idea of going to the Gamba, well, first point is the frontline staff, they're already in the Gamba. They see the reality every day with their own eyes. And in fact, one of the challenges in organizations is that the frontline staff are seeing you know, the, the, every day the reality of what's happening. And often what they're hearing from leaders, senior leaders, or seeing their decisions they struggle to sync those two together because they, they're kind of trying to figure out how does that match the reality of what I'm seeing. I'm not suggesting that what the senior leaders are saying or doing is wrong, but that's often where this disconnect can occur. And the reason why I think going to the game is so important for those that aren't in it every day is the importance of syncing up through direct personal observation, which is the purest form of data, uh, the reality at the front line in the Gamba with the numbers and the charts and the PowerPoint decks that they see, that there's some sort of uh, line they can draw between the Gamba and what they're seeing in the numbers. And if they can't, then they can start digging and asking, well, why is that? It, maybe these metrics are wanting. When we talk about the frontline leaders, um, they should be in the Gamba. And I think one point here about uh, going to the Gamba is look in the organization whether or not the first level leaders, the first level management are away from the Gamba too much. That they're being pulled into meetings and other activities and not spending enough time uh, in the Gamba. And uh, as a consequence, um, as you recall, they and the frontline staff should be conducting high quality root cause problem solving on a regular basis. And this uh, lack of exposure, regular exposure to the realities of the front line, in my experience, degrades the quality of that problem solving. Mid level uh, leaders, uh, mid level managers, if you will, have this what I call scale up role. So, among other things, what they do is scale up the ideas that are generated at the front line and, and test and look at them to see which ones should be spread and standardized across other processes, across other business units and geographies. Collectively, as a, as a peer group, they also see every process. Um, and as a group, have this role and a value that they can add in knitting together and harmonizing this ecosystem of processes so that we do have um, a seamless flow of value end to end for the customers. They also straddle the world, or they should, of the frontline reality with the longer term direction of the execs. So on the one hand, because they sh understand what's going on in the Gamba, or should, they can uh, better translate the high level longer term direction and ideas of the execs into operational ideas and language for the front line. And conversely, because they understand the temperature that's going on here in Gemba, can provide insight to the execs on you know, how much stress and change the front line can take. How is it really working in terms of the latest initiatives and so forth? I would suggest that as a starting point, uh, mid-level leaders should have at least a weekly cadence or routine of going into the, into the Gamba. Senior execs, 
Um, think about them in terms of a role of process governance, which includes things like uh, aligning the processes at a large level to strategy, prioritizing capital investment, therefore, around those strategic uh, initiatives, um, prescribing the uh, guardrails in which the front line is allowed to take action without having to get approval all the time. I think um, th this group uh, is the process owners of end-to-end -end, uh, large processes, strategic processes in the organization, and so forth. Um, this role um, is in large corporations would be you know, VPs, SVPs. Um, as contrasted with uh, role number five, corporate execs, which in these large uh, mega corporations would be uh, EVPs, group heads, uh, and so forth, and the CEO, of course. In some organizations, this might be combined and there's an executive group, but this role is still uh, required. And this role of vision and culture with respect to process excellence. So things like establishing uh, the reality of an empowered organization where the front line does have that um, permission and the tools and the budget to do quality root cause problem solving on a regular basis. This group of senior executives in uh, position four, I would suggest thinking about a monthly cadence is not unreasonable. Uh, or put another way is, I think, uh, a minimum. And then quarterly cadence for these corporate exec uh, levels, including the CEO, I think is a reasonable cadence. Now, one thing about having, especially for senior execs and the corporate execs, a more regular um, uh, exposure to the front line, which they can rotate through in different geographies, different business units over the course of the year, is um, it sends a very powerful signal to the frontline staff around that there is a support there. Um, and as these trips uh, are regular, they will become less stage managed, less of a sort of royal visit, if you will. There'll always be a little bit of that, but as um, the organization comes to understand and hear how they're not looking for fault, they're not looking for blame, and that if there are problems occurring, that's not a problem. What, what they want to see is that as problems arise, there is the ability and the transparency in the organization culture to call out that problem and to be able to problem solve on it, and that they're getting support as required by the organization. So uh, very briefly, um, that's my first uh, basic belief on metrics that we must go to the Gamba if we're not working in it in order to uh, inform the dashboards and the metrics and the PowerPoint decks with direct personal observation, which uh, I believe is the purest form of data.